no. Someone recalled a post about on the internet a long time ago. Last year I left a post on a flight test video about how we'd build a 50 inch airplane if we're still alive in 2021. Unfortunately, this is still working, I'm still breathing, so. We're gonna build a 50 inch airplane. But first, I gotta design some wing spars to make sure this thing works because this isn't my first rodeo building a giant group project at Flight Fest. We've done a few of them in the past. Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to get some poplar and some foam, and I'm gonna make these foam shear webs just to make these spars ahead of time because these have to be super straight and super accurate. With the wing spars out of the way, I've got my army of volunteers, and the first thing I'm gonna do is make these ribs. And now, I've actually made a pattern. I have these kids just cutting these ribs out, and mostly they're all fairly symmetrical, and I'm gonna start working on the fuselage while they're doing that. Luckily, the fuselage is really just four foam sides that's glued together. Super lightweight, and I think this will work just fine. And you can see it, it's pretty big. I think the fuselage is over 20 feet long, which is insane. It only weighs like six, seven pounds. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually gonna start building the wings. It's a simple process of just skinning the foams and making a uh, rigid structure. Now this is gonna be a fully cantilevered wing, so that means that these spars will carry the entire flight loads of the whole entire airplane. And just like that, it's all done when you have an army of slave labor and small kids. One thing I love about airplane builds is like setting them on the table and taking a giant look at them. Whoa, this thing is massive. Now I'm gonna quickly test the structural integrity of this wing by putting Toby on the wing. The tail is actually not supported, only supported at the very ends, and Toby is a 50 pound dog. So uh, it's looking pretty good for the wing spars at least. Ahead of Flight Fest, I laser cut these power pods to make the build go as easy as possible to try to eliminate as many variables as possible. Now I have my army of volunteers assembling these power pods. With a mountain of screws, a mountain of solder, and tons of volunteers, we got the power pods all assembled in record time. We literally, I think, got everything soldered in probably less than 30 minutes. 50 motors, yeah. less than 30 minutes. It was boom, done. Peter's like, they're done? Yeah, they're done. Also, huge thanks to Dale, Andrew, and Joshua Orchard for really making the soldering go faster. A few other volunteers, I really want to remember their names, but I'm so bad with names, my brain is totally fried during these events, but hey, Huge thanks to everyone that made this soldering go as fast as possible because I was really stressing if we we're gonna get this thing done, but you guys really pulled through and made it all possible. Next thing to do is glue the motor pods on. It's just simply just get some hot glue, slap it on, and put the pods down and count to 50. 50 is a big number. Funny thing is in the past, I was gonna build a plane with 21 engines with two fuselages. Meanwhile, yeah, we're doing this plane with 50 engines and I got tired of explaining this to everyone that walked by. So I literally drew this poster up so they can, you know, look at that and gaze in awe as we try to set some unofficial records here. The best thing about working with this green foam is Gorilla Glue works really well holding it together. So we just literally slap that on there, spray some water on it and wait for it to set up and dry. I'm kind of worried at this point. There, there is a lot of rain in the air and it's also being a little bit moist. So the foam board is pretty much waterproof, but at the same time, this isn't the best quality stuff. We got some of the C grade surplus foam that didn't quite pass the flight test uh, airplane inspections. So this stuff is kind of just given away to be used for this project. I'm working on the rudders right now. I'm actually giving this plane twin rudders to make it a little bit more uh, resilient if it does get to the point where planes are crashing into it and rip one of my rudders off. That way I still have another rudder to fly around. Now it's time to wire up this beast. Uh, I bought a whole bunch of Amazon extensions, a lot of Amazon extensions, half of them were garbage, but hey, we're wiring this thing up somehow. Now obviously wiring this thing up is a complete and total nightmare. Each motor needs its own speed controller. So what I figured to do is to simply make clusters of five to one battery. So we have a total of 10 batteries on the airplane each battery feeds a cluster of five motors, so it reduces the chance of like total systems failure. Something does get wired incorrectly. We can start powering this thing up. Let's plug this one in first. <laughs> All right, you ready? I'm gonna rev it. Clear props. No props. Is there a couple not spinning? Well, it works. Everything looks like it's working pretty well, except now it looks like someone makes a mistake. One of the connectors got put on backwards, and everyone missed it. And then we plugged it in, and it blew up a set of motors. 
Well, fortunately I foresaw this problem and made these things in separate clusters, so nine out of 10 clusters were wired correctly. This is also one of the reasons why I hate Dean's connectors. There's no polarities marked on them, you just have to know. So they were plugged in correctly, however, one of the wires were switched in. Five motors, totally shot, we need to remove them and do some quick repairs. At this point, I'm getting kinda hungry. I've been working on this thing for a long time, so it's time to fuel up. Or perhaps I should say, fuel up. <laughs> Big thanks to Heal for sponsoring this video. Heal Complete Protein is a 100% nutritionally complete, high protein snack made from sustainable hemp, fava, and pea protein. Heal is a great time saver. Oftentimes, in the middle of these giant projects, I'll just go out and eat junk food, which isn't really great for your diet. Heal is a great solution to this issue. Being a complete nutritional snack, Heal is great at holding you over to dinner time or to a bigger meal. Heal's Complete Protein is available in six different amazing flavors. I tried a few protein shakes and I'm very satisfied with Heal's taste. It mixes well and is very smooth consistency. Nothing is worse than getting a protein shake from like other manufacturers and having it being chunky and not smooth. I have not had this problem with Heal. Get started today with a more nutritionally balanced diet by clicking the link in the description below and get started with Heal today. Now that we're done healing up, it's time to repair the ESCs. Fortunately, we have five ESCs to swap out, and yep, it looks like they're working just fine now. So the ESCs completely repaired now. It's time to set the wing on the airplane, and let's look at this giant monstrosity. Now, I can't attach the wings just yet. We have to get this plane outside because uh, there's an obvious size constraint here. This plane would not fit out of the tent. It is impossible to fit currently in its current state of assembledness. <laughs> <laughs> now it's the next day. The weather is so much nicer, and this is the last day of Flight Fest. This plane has to fly today, or we're going to be in serious trouble. I'm going to be in serious trouble because I'm not going to have a video for this month. So, yes, it is time to finally assemble the plane. Slather on some Gorilla Glue and spray on some water because this stuff is water activated. At this point, everyone's getting kind of like. This is insane. This plane is huge. This thing is never gonna fly. This plane is totally gonna fly. And a little bit of all of the above. Fortunately, my wing spars, I'm kind of, you know, doubting these things if they're gonna really hold up. The plane is getting a little soggy and saggy. And also, the sun is actually coming out and we built this plane in like a humid climate. So now look, look, my wings, my poor wings. The glue is coming undone because the dimensions are changing of something like this. The, keep in mind, this is a 30 foot wingspan airplane. And uh, it's assembled with hot glue. This isn't looking so great because uh, as this plane sits out longer in the daytime, I know I need to get this thing in the air like right now because the longer it sits, the more the wing panels are coming apart. And this is a fully cantilevered wing, meaning it has to fully support itself. If it doesn't support itself in me and is not rigid enough, this plane may not fly very well and could come apart in flight. The last bits we need to do is some center of gravity checking and we're gonna add some water bottles because obviously we need some nose weight planes that are tail heavy do not fly very well or fly at all. It's imperative we get the center of gravity right, so water bottles it is. They're not hard. If this plane crashes into someone, they're just gonna get wet. <laughs> some quick CG checking the good old fashioned way, which is lift the airplane up and see if it balances. Now my adrenaline is definitely starting to go because like, uh, I don't know if this is gonna survive any sort of failure. If we launch this thing, it might just explode into like a million pieces. It's flying! <laughs> I mean, look at it. It's flimsy foam and garbage from Home Depot and Lowe's. Is this thing really gonna fly? <laughs> well, there's not enough power to really drag this thing off the ground. Oh well, we gotta try it on the cart now. Now the crowd is kind of really building up. I'm like, man, I hope this thing performs. I have a pretty good track record of making all my planes fly. It would be a shame if this thing doesn't fly. Fun fact, this thing is actually bigger than all of my ultralights. My largest ultralight has a 26 foot wingspan. This thing has a 30 foot wingspan, but also weighs only about probably 50 pounds compared to my ultralight flying weights of about uh, 350 with me in it. This is ridiculous. It's, it should float. I think it's gonna float. Only one way to find out. Let's send it. Are you ready? Go, 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 go.
Well, crap, that did not work very well. I mean, it sort of worked, it flew, and then the stabilizer hit the golf cart. I was holding up on it, like cranking on it, trying to get it up. We might have had a little bit too much nose weight, come to think of it, because I ran on elevator authority. But we did briefly get it off the cart, so I'm glad we did that. Let's go inspect the damage. <laughs> I was at full power too. Look at that. Jeez. Oh, jeez. Looks like the wing spar is still intact. The plane's still stuck together. We can repair this. Let's try it. Let's, let's try it. Let's do it. Let's take it back and glue it together because we still have an actual airplane here and this bar is still in one piece. So I think we can do this again. We're gonna repair it. I, I looked it over and I'm like, there's still a lot of airplane left. So that first flight, it I think it flew too fast, like faster than it needed to go. With some of these large builds, I've kind of noticed a trend where like the elevator starts lifting up a little bit more. So I think it can go with the slightly more tail heavy configuration. There is a limit to this though. The more tail heavy it gets, the more unstable the plane becomes and the more harder it is to fly. But I think this plane is floating enough that it should be all right. So I'm gonna remove four of the 10 water balls we put in the nose and hopefully this gets us a more normal CG. Also, some of the volunteers were right that pointed out the tail was a little bit more flexy than it should be because uh, the tail did flutter and it did rip off. So we're going to make some adjustments to the tail and then we're going to try it again because I think this is going to work. Back together for another round two. Here we go. Time for round two and perhaps the only other round this plane will get because Flight Fest is winding down. I have little to no time to finish this thing up because everyone's leaving and going home and the excitement is dwindling. Let's give him some round of applause. It's a great big project that everybody's been doing all weekend long. Hopefully we can get something good going out of this. Thanks so much. Here goes nothing, right, Peter? It's going, it's going. This is actually flying okay. It's, it's, it's slow as I thought it would be. But uh, all right, let's uh, start initiating a slight turn. Um, okay, it's looking all right. Power's pretty good. I'm a little about half throttle. All right, all right, it's oscillating. It, yeah, it's tail heavy, but um, we're still airborne. Okay, it's it's not rolling out of this. I think we got a serious issue here. Yep, it's over. I opened my mouth, at least I filled my promise. The plane didn't fly super well, but at least it got like a couple hundred feet up in the air, turned around, and then piled drive to the ground. Huge thanks to Flight Test, because Josh hooked me up with these motors. And we would have, it would have not been possible on Josh, so. Awesome. Uh, it didn't work. I mean, it sort of worked, it flew. I rest my case. We did build a 50 inch airplane. That's 30 foot wingspan. It totally flew. It made half a lap around the field, and then augered into the ground spectacularly in slow motion, almost like a giant airplane crashing in real life. Now the problem with this is because the wing started coming apart in the sun and unfortunately that's because of the weather which is out of my control. The day we built it, it was kind of moisture, it was kind of moist in the air so the moisture lingered over to the next day when the plane got in the sun and started drying up and the wing started dimensionally changing shape because the moisture was evaporating from the paper covered foam causing it to contract and expand in certain areas leading to 
floppy wing syndrome. Now, what is floppy wing syndrome, you might say? Well, that is when your wings are floppy. Now, the wings can easily develop lift even if they're floppy, but the problem is if you have a cantilever wing with no outside supports, the wing can actually do wing warping, good and bad. But the problem is with an aileron wing, you do not want wing warping. So let's just say when the plane was turning to the right, I added the right aileron to go down to bring that wing up. What happened was the aileron went down, but the problem is the leading edge of that wing would pitch the opposite way. This is essentially what's happened here in this giant airplane. I would initiate a roll command, it would start it, but the moment it picked up some speed, things started changing and I would actually lose control of the entire airplane. So unfortunately, this whole project was brought down by the floppy wings in the sunlight. So if you survived 2021 and we're live in 2022 and there's a flight fest in 2022, let's build a fit. No, let's build a hundred engine airplane. Let's throw out all the stops. Let's make it even bigger and try it again. Maybe not bigger, but let's try it again with a hundred engines. Brush motors, of course, to really save people's time. <laughs> Huge thanks again for everyone to make this happen. This would not be possible at all without the volunteers to help put this thing together. Tons of kids came out. You guys were a blast to work with, especially the volunteers that I would have not been able to build such a massive airplane in such a short amount of time. If this is in a way, this would be possible. I really have to give it, give a hats off to you guys. Let me know what suggestions you have below for the next airplane that we're gonna build. We're gonna, we're gonna definitely gonna build a plane with dihedral rather than aileron. So it could be as floppy as it wants and fly around and flap in the breeze while still maintaining some sort of directional control. <laughs>